Good afternoon students, this is Reema, your biology educator from V-Learning. So V-Learning is an online educational platform where we provide quality education for all. So to get all the benefits from our channel, do subscribe to it and also don't forget to visit to our website that is www.v-learning.in where you will be getting all the pre-recorded videos and the live classes. So in our previous class, uh, we have completed your vertebrates right and also we have learned about class spices isn't it so in today's class we are going to cover this uh, that is uh, this is your last topic of the chapter 4 that is animal kingdom so in today's class we are going to learn about class amphibia class reptilia class apes and class mammalia right so in the previous class we have learned about all the fishes right you have seen that um, the cyclostomata and also uh, you, you have seen the various uh, fishes and all their characteristics right that is the um, that is the vertebrates are again divided into a uh, various of uh, various classes right they are divided into agnata and ganata stomata right so in the agnata you have studied about the class cyclostomata when you have seen that uh, these are not the true patients, right? They feed on the other higher patients, right? Cyclostomata and they do not have jaw. When in case of um, this Ganathostomata, again it was divided into two classes, two um, uh, subclasses, right? So that is one is your uh, Pisces and another is your Tetrapoda, isn't it? So in that Pisces, you have seen that it is again divided into two classes, that is your class chondritochitis and osteochitis, isn't it? And the next one, that is tetrapoda, it is divided into four class, right? That is your class amphibia, class reptilia, class apes and class mammalia, right? So in today's class, we are going to learn about this, the subclass tetrapoda, which is your various uh, four classes, clear? And this is your lecture number six. So let's begin today's session. Yes. So what you can see, this is amphibia, right? This is a frog, isn't it? So what do you mean by this amphibians? Amphibians means those organisms uh, which are living both in the land water okay so these are known as your amphibians so look at the structure of the fish how it is so does it have eyelid yes fish uh, that is sorry frog has got eyelids so in the frog you will find this eyelids here there will be eyelids they have got eyelids okay so here this portion is known as trunk this is the trunk and this is the head of the fish, this, uh, sorry, head of the frog, okay. So this is the head of the frog. So the frog body is divided into head and trunk. So yes, yeah. Next, let us uh, learn the general features of this amphibians. What are the various features of them? So amphibians, what amphibians do well, okay. Amphibians dwell and bios means life. Okay, so they can uh, they can live in both land and water. Okay, they have got a dual life. Clear. So they have originated from the low fins. They have originated from the low fins. So all the amphibians basically they have evolved from the fishes. Okay. So they have evolved from this low fins, clear from where they have originated, originated from your low fins, okay? Origin is from low fins. Next, habitat, aquatic as well as terrestrial. So where they live, they live both in aquatic as well as in the land, right? So limbs, they have got two pairs of limbs, okay? They have two pairs of limbs. Then body, how the body is, as I have shown, the body is divided into head and trunk. So their body is divided into two parts, that is your head and trunk. 
and tail may be present in some. So in some of them like salamander, they have got tail, okay? And how is the skin of the uh, frogs or the amphibians? Their skin is very, very moist, okay? That helps them in respiration. So, it helps them in respiration. In case of them, they can respire through the, sorry, they can respire through the skin, through the lungs and also to the gills. So for respiration, they have got three things, okay? For respiration, they have got lungs, they have got skin, and also they have got gills. Now, uh, what is the function of these gills, okay? When the frogs, they do fertilization, they go in the water, okay? So how they will um, respire in the water? They use the gills at that time, okay? So with the help of the gills, they respire in the water. So they have got what? They have got lungs so they have lungs they have gills and also they have got they have got skin okay all these things this helps in what this helps in respiration so they have got three things for respiration is that clear so next let us see okay uh, let, uh, let me draw the structure of frog Something like this, let's say it is the mouth portion, it has got this limbs and like this from where another limb, so like this, okay, this is the eye, okay, then this has got eyelids, okay, this one is what, this one is your head, this one is your Trunk. This is the trunk, right? This is the head. And how is their skin? Their skin is moist. Okay, they have got moist skin. They have moist skin, which helps them in respiration, right? So this uh, has got. They have got a pair of limbs. Okay, they have got pair of limbs. Now from here, from the mouth. Here, this will be the alimentary canal. So, this is the alimentary canal through which the digestion takes place. So, this is the alimentary canal. Alimentary canal. What is the function of alimentary canal? It helps in digestion and it opens here. Okay. So, they have got only one opening so in case of amphibians in case of apes apes means birds okay they have got only one opening that is known as your cloaca so they have got only one opening that means here if it is the reproductive organ okay and here if it is the urinary tract okay so that is a uh, reproductive reproductive organ okay and then at um, yeah urinary and this is the digestion okay they have got only one opening okay so digestive and uh, reproductive and the urinary tract they all together has got only one opening that is known as your cloaca clear so this is all about it they do not have tail okay and the scientific name of uh, your frog is rana tigris okay rana tigris yes they have got eyelids they have eyelids right so next yeah the eyes of eyelids which you have already seen they have got eyelids uh, a temple represents the ear. Okay. So they have, they do not have ear, but they have got tympanum which represents the ear. So somewhere they will be having like this uh, tympanum, which T Y M P A and U M, right? P A and U M. So this tympanum is responsible for listening. Okay, they do not have ear. But they have tympanum which helps in listening. Yeah. Now they do not have this pinnae. Okay. Now uh, they do not have ear 
pile. Have you ever seen that the frogs will be having like this? Like this, the uh, ear. Pile. They do not have, okay? They do not have this ear, uh, pile. Urinary reproductive tract open into a common chamber called cloaca. Okay, so as I have said that alimentary canal, then urinary tract and reproductive tract, they open into a one opening that is your cloaca, right? So that is your cloaca. That opening is known as cloaca, which opens to the exterior and respiration is by gills which we have seen that they have got three things for respiration that is your gills lungs and skin and through skin and their skin is very moist not dry and the heart is three chambers that is two auricles and one ventricle so amphibians have got how many chamber heart amphibians have Amphibians have three chambered heart. Three chambered heart. That is how many auricles they have? Like this. If this is the structure of heart, so they have got two auricles. Okay, this is four chamber, it becomes weight. So, yes, if I omit this, now this is your. This is two auricles, okay, and this is one ventricle. So they have got how many auricles? They have two auricles and one ventricle. All right. So uh, how many chambers we have in uh, mammals? How many chambers we have in herd? We have four chambers. Amphibians they have got three chambered herd. That is two auricles one ventricle. Now what is the function of this auricle? Auricle is responsible for what? Auricle is responsible for receiving the blood and this ventricle is responsible for pumping the blood. Is that clear? Yes. And these are cold-blooded animals. So they are cold-blooded animals and they cannot regulate their body temperature. Yes. Now how fertilization is taking place in case of frogs? Are they viviparous or the oviparous? So sexes are separate. Yes, we can easily identify the male and the female frogs. And fertilization is external. That is, they produce eggs outside the body, okay, in the water. So it is oviparous, right? So the egg, uh, that is, it is oviparous. Fertilization is oviparous. That is, eggs are produced outside the body and development is indirect. Now what do you mean by this direct and indirect? Indirect means the small babies will not be exactly similar to the parent. Okay, They will undergo metamorphosis. So in them their, ba their babies are called as the baby of frog. They are called as your they are called as Tadpole, okay? Tadpoles. So they look like fishes. They will be something like this, okay? They look like fishes. Okay. And uh, when they grow up, okay, they will undergo metamorphosis and they develop. So how the fertilization take place? They do not have uh, this penis-like structure. So when the um, uh, when the, they uh, want to undergo fertilization, they do it in the water. So the male frog, they have got a, uh, yeah, they will touch the body of the female and what they do? They will release the ovum and the sperm. So the female frog, when the uh, male uh, frog come in touch with the female frog, it will touch the body of the female frog. The male frog will touch the body of the female frog and the both of them will be releasing the gametes. The male frog will release the sperm into the water and the female will release the ova. So if it is a, yeah, if it is a ova, the male frog will release the sperms in the, the water, right? 
and the female also will be releasing the ova okay so it is also releasing the ova and the male one also will release the sperms into the water okay so that it is oviparous so they release it into the water bodies so yeah so what happens the fertilization is taking place externally right so the development is indirect so this is how the reproduction takes place in case of your frogs and the baby of frog is known as tadpole yeah so examples are your buffo okay then ran that is your frog this is your uh, tadpole okay then hyla hyla is the tree frog then next is your salamander then limbless amphibia okay so this is your tadpole so this is tadpole right this is your frog that is rana then yes this is the tree frog you can see okay this is tree frog it lives by hanging into the leaves of the trees this is your salamander okay so it has got tail as you can see it has tail okay so it has got tail this is salamander okay next uh, yeah next uh, class let's study about reptilia we have learned about the class amphibian right i hope you are clear with it so next class is your reptilia reptiles now what are the animals they are coming under reptiles it is your snakes right then it is your crocodiles alligators all these are coming under your reptiles so reptiles are also your vertebrates they also have backbone now look into this their skin will be your dry they will be having dry skin so this is a crocodile they will be having dry skins so this they will be having this spiny things in their body so they are they are having this spiny structures and it is made up of your keratin right so let us see the characteristics of the class reptilia so the class reptilia refers to the creeping and crawling okay you will see that they will uh, how they move from one place to another they need to crawl right since uh, snakes isn't it? they do not have legs they will crawl and they will move so that's why they are what they are creeping or crawling so they have creeping or crawling mode of locomotion right so the latin word it refers to repair or reptile to crawl or creep okay that is the meaning next is they are mostly terrestrial animals and their body is covered by dry and conified skin epidermal scales or scutes okay so their body is covered with what their body is covered with conified okay that is conified skin that is called as your scutes yeah so they do not have external ear opening so in them also they do not have your pinna okay like we have right ears they do not have they also have, they only have this tympanum this tympanum uh, helps them in listening so this tympanum represents the ear as we have seen in case of frogs like they also have this tympanum yeah next so let us let me draw if this is a a uh, crocodile like this it will be having limbs here right this is the tail right so it has got eyes and here yeah it is the eye okay this is the eye okay and here they have got tympanum right so they have got tympanum yeah. so this is what this is for listening this is for listening okay and their body is made up of they have body is made up of scutes right s c u t e s 
so their skin is dry they have got what this they have got dry skin so they have dry skin so they have teeth here right yeah like this all right yeah next uh limbs when present there are two pairs as you have seen they have a got a pair of limbs and heart is usually three chambers so reptiles also have got three chambered heart remember reptiles have three chambered heart but in case of crocodile it is exceptional they have got four chambered heart okay this is very very important so this is exceptional they have got four chambered heart otherwise reptiles also have how many chambered heart reptiles also have three chambered heart okay three chambered heart but the only exception is your crocodile crocodile has how many chambered heart four chambered heart this is important for you i am seeking your question okay so reptiles are poikilotherms okay what do you mean by this poikilotherms means they are cold blooded animals they are your cold yeah they are cold blooded animals yes they are cold blooded animals so snake to neither shed their scales as skin cast you have seen that snake they will be uh, repairing their skins isn't it they will be losing their skins why they lose their skins they will be shedding their skins in order to grow and develop sexes are separate and fertilization is internal so in case of them the fertilization is internal and they are oviparous oviparous means they are also laying eggs outside the body not inside okay so they are laying the eggs outside the body so they lay eggs they lay eggs outside the body okay outside body the baby is developed outside the body is direct okay in case of them there is no indirect development it is your direct development the babies will be exactly exactly similar to the parents yeah and example you can see this is your turtle and tortoise right next yeah this is your tree lizard and this one is your crocodile right these are all examples of reptiles this is your cobra okay this is another snake so this is the example of your reptiles so so far we have studied about your class reptiles right we have completed your class what we have completed amphibians we have seen the characteristics of amphibians and now we have seen the characteristics of reptiles i hope you have understood right so now let us learn about the birds that is aves okay so all the birds are kept under the class aves right so what are the characteristics of the birds the birds have got what you know that birds have got feathers right so which helps them to fly so they can fly their feathers are very very light in weight so as a result they can fly and most of them can fly except flight with birds like ostrich so ostrich they cannot fly right and emu also that right? this uh, these are the birds which cannot fly excuse me so they possess what beaks okay in case of bird you will see what you will see this beaks so they will be having beaks right so they do not have they do not have jaw right their jaws are modified into what their jaws are modified into your beaks their jaws are modified into beak all right so the forms are modified into wings and in case of this reptiles you have seen limbs right in case of mammals they have limbs right but in case of uh, this uh, what uh, birds their forelimbs are modified into wings clear and wing 
limbs generally have gills and are modified for walking, swimming, or clapping the tree branches. So the hin limbs they are modified, right? So which helps the birds to hold the things. And yeah, next is let us see some more characteristics. The skin is dry without glands. Except the oil glands at the base of the tail. So, in case of birds, they have got what? They have dry skin. Only they have oil glands near the tail. Okay? And endoskeleton is fully ossified, that is, bony, and long bones are hollow with air cavities. Okay? They are known as pneumatic bones. So, in case of birds, their, bo uh, their bones are how? Their bones are hollow like this. Okay. So, if this is the bone of the bird, so like this, this portion, let me cover it. It is like hollow. They have got what? They have got hollow bones, which helps them to fly right and this type of bones are known as they are known as pneumatic bones clear so these hollow bones are known as pneumatic bones and they are filled with what they are filled with ear cavities so the digestive tract of birds has additional chambers so in case of birds they have additional chambers that is what they have the Crop, okay, they have crop and geyser, which helps in the masticulation of food that helps in properly breaking the food. Clear? So, heart is completely four chambered. So, in case of your mammals, in case of apes, that is birds, they have how many chambered heart? They have four chambered heart. Clear? So, they have four chambered heart. Then they are warm blooded, that is homeothermous. So, warm blooded animals are known as your homeothermous, that is, they are able to maintain the body temperature. You have seen that amphibians, you have seen the reptiles and the pisces, right? They are all what? They are cold blooded animals. They cannot maintain their body temperature, right? So, but in case of birds, in case of mammals, we can maintain our body temperature. We are homeothermous. Is that clear? So, respiration is by lungs. Okay, in case of birds, they respire by lungs. Birds have lungs for respiration. Yes. Now, let me draw the picture of a bird. This is the beak. Okay. Like this. This is the feather. This is the tail. And here it ends. This is the hind limb. This is hind limb. This is the eye. Okay. And this is what? This is they have big, right? They have got bigs. So, in case of birds, their uh, jaw are modified into what? Their jaws are modified into bigs. This is eye, right? Then this is what? They have got wings, right? So, this is your wings. This is the wings. They have got what? They have got feathers. They have got feathers, right? Then they have got tail, right? How is the skin? How is the skin of the birds? They have got dry skin or moist. The skin is what? The skin is dry. Right? They have got dry skin. Right? But they have got oil secreting gland, isn't it? Where it is? Near the tail. Okay? Near the tail, they have got what? They have got oil secreting glands. And these are what? These are the hind limbs. So, these are the hind limbs. In the hind limbs, they have got scales. Okay? So, they have got scales like you have seen in case of fishes, isn't it? So, in case of birds in the hind limbs, they have got scales. So, this is your hind limbs. This is hind limbs, right? 
so in case of birds they have got a membrane in the eyes that is known as nictitating nictate membrane okay this nictitating membrane it helps the birds to keep the eyes moist clear this is not written in your book so they have got a nictitating membrane that keeps the eyes of the birds moist clear so this is all the characteristics which we have studied in the birds and how many chambered heart they have yes they have got four chambered heart right so they have got four chambered heart so they have four chambered heart right so birds have four chambered heart and what is the respiratory organ for them how they respire they respire with the help of lungs so they have got lungs for respiration and here what we have seen here what we have seen they have got what they have got two things what are the two thing or uh, two things they have they have got what they have got geyser isn't it and also they have got what they have got they have got crop isn't it they have got crop and geyser so they have got crop and also they have what they have geyser so what is the function of this geyser geyser it helps in masticulation of food right that is breaking down of the food so they also have got single opening in case of birds they have got single opening that is known as cloaca so they have got single opening that is known as cloaca they do not have anus they do not have excretory organs and also they do not have different reproductive organs right they have only one opening that is known as cloaca and they release the excretory products in the form of uric acid so they release the excretory products the uric acid they release it outside they release the uric acid that is excretory product is your uric acid is that clear so this is all about it and in case of birds how they uh, reproduce how they reproduce uh, they reproduce that is reproduction it takes place with the help of this cloaca cloaca is a single opening with the help of this what excretion reproduction everything takes place with the help of cloaca clear cloaca sorry yeah so this is all about it and you can see they have got lungs and lungs is supported by what it is supported by a ear sex but they respire with the help of lungs only it is supported by your ear sex and the sexes are separate and the fertilization is internal okay in case of birds that is ostrich and uh, emu they have got this uh, penis like structure that is uh, they have got a uh, penis like structure for the delivering the male gamete that is sperm but in case of the flying birds they do not have this penis like structure so how they do this internal fertilization the male bird and the female bird come in close together and through the cloaca they interchange the gametes is that clear <coughs> so this is the process how the fertilization takes place so it is internal but in case of birds you will see that they are developing the babies are developing from the uh, eggs only isn't it so it is <clears throat> oviparous right so they are oviparous that is the babies are developed outside the body and the development is direct that is the baby of the uh, bird will be exact to the baby of the uh, parent only right yeah crow pigeon parrot ostrich <coughs> penguin all these are the example of birds and you have to remember the scientific names okay it will come in your exam sorry so as you can see these are the pictures of the birds yeah this is what this is your ostrich and do you know that ostrich egg is the largest cell is the largest egg okay and this is penguin it cannot fly these are the birds which cannot fly so so far we have discussed about the 
class 8 you have learned all about the birds you have seen all the characteristics of birds uh, right so the last topic of this chapter we are going to complete this chapter right so in the last topic is what it is all about the mammals that is the class mammalia okay so under the mammals we are coming okay and the dogs cat all are mammals that is they have the mammary glands which makes them unique okay the unique feature of the mammal is the presence of your mammary glands so you can see okay they have got this one right in case of amphibians have you seen they have ears no right so here in case of mammals we have got what we have got this ear pine all right we have this then we are more developed organism our brain is more developed right so let us study the characteristics yes so the mammals will be found in different habitats because we are more developed and we can adjust to the surroundings like we uh, the some of the animals can live in the desert like camel they can live in the forest right they can live in the polar ice caps like polar bear and <clears throat> like mountains then forests grasslands and also in the dark caves okay so why they can live because they are more developed organism clear so and they can adjust to the environment some of them they have <clears throat> adapted to fly or live in water so blue well like blue well that is well well is what it is a mammal it can live in the water and it respires with the help of your lungs and the most unique mammalian characteristics is what uh, is what is the presence of your mammary gland so we have what uh, we mammals have your mammary gland which makes it a unique so remember here the question might come mcq question from here what is the most unique feature the most unique feature is what it is what it is the presence of your mammary glands so yeah they have two pairs of limbs we have uh, two hands we have two legs isn't it which helps them to, uh, which helps us to move so we have uh, mammals have two pairs of limbs uh, adapted for walking running climbing right swimming or flying etc next is what the skin of mammal is very very soft and it is having hairs right so what is the function of this hair it helps to regulate the temperature so in the body of the mammals you will see like for example in the dog you will see lots of hair right so what it does it helps in regulation of your temperature regulation of temperature and how is the body of mammal is it very very hard bro uh, right no no right it is very very soft the body of the mammal is soft they have got soft body <laughs> teeth are present in the jaw in case of um mammals you will see that different types of teeth like um canine right then incisors uh, premolar molar right so we will have different types of teeth and heart you know we have four chambered heart two arteries and two ventricles is that clear we have four chambered heart they are homeothermous that means we are warm blooded animals we can regulate the body temperature what is the meaning of homeothermous means warm blooded animals clear respiration by lungs we have lungs for respiration then yes sexes are separate we can identify the male and the female with the help of the reproductive organs or through the morphological features so sex is the separate and fertilization is internal okay so in case of mammals they will be having internal fertilization we do not produce uh, mammals do not produce babies outside the body that is it is taking inside the body the baby is being developed inside the body right that's why fertilization is internal and it is viviparous right 
So they are viviparous and with few exceptions and developments is direct. That is our babies, that is the babies will be exactly similar to the parents. That is human babies will be similar, having, having similar features to the humans only, right? So you will see the dogs, puppies, right? So that will be matching to the parent. That is development is direct, not indirect. So these are the few examples. Elephant, these are the examples which you have to remember. So uh, this is the lion. Next you can see, these are some of the examples from your textbook. So this is a mammal which is having this big like structure, okay? That is known as ornithor, ornithor hindcus, okay? So this mammal, it has been, uh, it is having this uh, big like structure. And this is kangaroo, okay, macropus. So it is having this pouch like structure as you can see here it is keeping the baby. So here it keeps the baby. The baby of the kangaroo is not that much um, healthy. So it need to keep it in the pouch. So when it is developed fully then only it, the mother will uh, take it out, okay. So they do not have this strong placenta. In case of human beings, um, the baby when it develops, they have got what? They have got strong placenta. But in case of this macropus, they do not have strong placenta. They have got weak placenta. Because of which, their babies are not that much healthy. They will be very much small, okay? So, the candle needs to keep the baby in that pouch, alright. So, slowly and slowly it will be uh, having milk from the mother, okay, from the mammary glands. It will develop, when it develops then only the mother will take it out, clear. So, this is a bat and this is what this, uh, the scientific name is Petropus, bat, okay. And this is uh, Balantopera, okay. So, this is what, this is your well. Do well. So this is all about it and this is from your NCRT. This is very, very, uh, this chart will make you, your um, uh, learning very, very easy. You can see that all the phylums are given and it is being categorized very nicely. Where you can see the phylum porifera, right? In the porifera, you have seen only the cellular level. So it has been divided. <clears throat> the level of organization is cellular. So you can see symmetry. Various, they do not have telom, right? Segregation is absent, digestion absent, everything is absent, respiratory is absent, circulatory absent, right? But they have got what distinctive feature is, uh, distinctive, sorry, feature is your pores, right? So in porifera, they have got pores. So this chart, go through this chart, this will make um, the phylum very much clear to you. All the phylums, it has been divided according to the level of organization and all the characteristics. So this is all about it. We have completed your chapter number four by this. So that is all about animal kingdom, right? I hope you have understood all the concepts from this chapter. So next class, I will be starting with chapter number four, that, uh, sorry, chapter number five. So that is all about your plant. We will learn about the morphology of the flowering plants, okay? So do attend all the classes and uh, be connected with Vistas Learning so that you will be getting all the benefits from it. And don't forget to visit to our website that is www.v-learning.in where you will be getting all the live classes and pre-recorded videos. So be connected with us. See you in my next class. Thank you.